Good morning and welcome to the celebration of the Lord's Day on this second Sunday after the Epiphany. The order for the Holy Eucharist Rite 2 is on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer or in your virtual program. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom now, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the... A reading from First Samuel. Earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, is the light of the world, grant that your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, may shine with the radiance of Christ's glory, that he may be known, worshipped, and obeyed to the ends of the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from 1 Samuel. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. And he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel. Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make both ears of anyone who hears of it tingle. On that day I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end. For I have told him that I am about to punish his house forever for the iniquity that he knew, because his sons were blaspheming, blaspheming God, and he did not restrain them. Therefore I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be expiated by sacrifice or offerings forever. Samuel lay there until morning. Then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli, but Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son, he said, Here I am. Eli said, What was it that he told you? Do not hide it from me. 
May God do so to you, and more also, if you hide anything from me of all that he told you. So Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. Then he said, It is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him, and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, knew that Samuel was a trustworthy prophet of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today the psalm is Psalm 139, verses 1 through 5, 12 through 17, on page 794 of the Book of Common Prayer. Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places and are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips, but you, O Lord, know it all together. You press upon me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. For you yourself created my inmost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will thank you because I am marvelously made. Your works are wonderful and I know it well. My body was not hidden from you while I was being made in secret and woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my limbs, yet unfinished in the womb. All of them were written in your book. They were fashioned day by day, when as yet there was none of them. How deep I find your thoughts, O God, how great is the sum of them. If I were to count them, they would be more in number than the sand. To count them all, my lifespan would need to be like yours. The word of the Lord. A reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are beneficial. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. Food is meant for the stomach and the stomach for food, and God will destroy both one and the other. The body is meant not for fornication, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord and will also raise us by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Should I therefore take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that whoever is united to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For it is said, the two shall be one flesh. But anyone united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Shun fornication. Every sin that a person commits is outside the body, but the fornicator sins against the body itself. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you were bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote. Jesus, son of Joseph, from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. 
When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, He is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each heart be holy and acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Well, this may come as a, a shock to you, but I'm, I'm not going to touch that Corinthian reading this morning in my sermon. Uh, boy, howdy, no way. Uh, I, uh, I grew up in a big city, and I went to a big high school. Uh, Brian Adams High School was the name. And no, it is not named after the famed Canadian pop rock star, Brian Adams. I got my first real stick string out of five and I'm. Some of you know exactly what just happened there. Um, others of you that don't are going to be a bit frightened. Some are 69. All right. But I was in this district with like 30 other high schools. And so I missed out on that small town rivalry thing that exists in so many other parts of our great state. To tell you the truth, I didn't even know my high school had an arch rival until a few years ago when I learned it was actually Woodrow Wilson High School. So that just goes to show you how much school spirit your priest possessed back then. But those rivalries do exist, right? Maybe you grew up with one. The past five years, we got to experience it firsthand living in Sweetwater whose rival is Snyder. And we noticed how it extended well beyond the arena of school athletics. And at times you witnessed like kind of an actual animosity between towns, or you just heard things like, well, sounds like classic Roscoe for you, or something like those people in Lorraine, they ain't right. I mean, towns literally just miles apart, but evidently living in such different worlds that there were these operating stereotypes. It kind of fascinated me. And I think it's because place finds a way inside of us. Our towns and our cities and all the good and bad that comes with them shapes our identities and shapes the way we understand ourselves and other people. And you know, one of the things that's really interesting about our gospel reading this morning is that John is dropping in the hometown names of these disciples and of Jesus. And I learned that town rivalries existed even more so back then than they do today. According to a social science commentary on the Gospel of John, the belief that the place you came from marked and even in some ways predetermined your personality, well, that was alive and well, and stereotypes abounded. The next day, Jesus wanted to go to Galilee, and he found Philip. Jesus said, follow me. Now, Philip was from Bethsaida the hometown of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael, and a little later in the Gospel of John, we're going to learn that Nathanael is from Cana. We don't know that here, but surely Philip knew it. And Philip said, we have found the one the law and the prophets speak to us about. His name is Jesus, and he's from Nazareth. And Nathanael's response, can anything good come out of Nazareth? There's a lot packed into that response, and we can catch a glimpse of their world, but let's take a deeper look into these towns mentioned. Bethsaida, hometown to three of the disciples. It was a small fishing town next to Capernaum. Now, Capernaum had the mall and the movie theater and the Chili's and talk of a Starbucks was in the air. And Bethsaida lived in Capernaum's shadow a bit. They had a few mom and pop shops a couple of rundown antique stores and just a greasy little cafe on the town square, but they had a decent marching band. 
And the town really came out for the annual harvest every year in September. Now, Cana was just seven miles northeast of Nazareth, now a major pilgrimage site because of that whole water to wine at the wedding thing. But back then, not much was really going on, not even a town square. Just one road in and out, a Dairy Queen, a taxidermy place, a Roman bath that people complained drained their taxes for its upkeep, but they knew how to take care of one another. If anyone got sick or if a loved one died, there'd be a knock on the door and a casserole dish within the hour. And then there was Nazareth, the smallest of these towns, a very close-knit community, and the jokes about their, shall we say, interconnectedness were very common. Oh, Nazareth! They'd say 400 people in the town and only three last names. But the people from Nazareth took it in stride. They raised their children together, buried their dead together. They prayed together, sang together, laughed and wept together. And we don't know exactly why Nathaniel responded so disparagingly about Jesus being from Nazareth. Maybe a girl from Nazareth broke his heart. Maybe his dad was a drunk and he often had to pull him out of the bar there in Nazareth, or maybe he was just taught, taught to look down on people from Nazareth, because that's how we come to hate, isn't it? We are taught. It's modeled for us. But whatever the reason, these ragamuffin disciples from these rival hometowns begin to see something in this Jesus from Nazareth. And to their most skeptical and sarcastic of friends, they say, come and see. Just come and see, Nathaniel. Come and see. So Nathaniel does. And upon his approach, Jesus says, Ah, truly an Israelite in which there is no deceit. Now, of course, Nathaniel is already intrigued, but here's what gets really interesting, because in that statement, Jesus is making a reference to Jacob from the Old Testament. You know, the guy who swindled his brother out of his inheritance, then cheated his father-in-law out of livestock, and then wrestled with God in the wilderness and got his name changed from Jacob, which means deceiver, to Israel. So now Jesus creatively lays on top of his conversation with Nathanael the story of Jacob. And the two have an exchange in which the young skeptic from Cana begins to see something and the young ruffian from Nazareth. And Jesus says, this is only the beginning, Nathanael. Only the beginning, for you will see angels ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Angels ascending and descending. What is he talking about? Why is he saying angels are ascending and descending upon him? What's Jesus mean? Well, he's bringing them back into the story of Jacob. Jacob was on the run from his brother Esau, but he was probably chasing something just as much as he was running from something like all of us do. Well, he makes camp on the side of the road, lays his head on the rock and dreams. And in the dream, there are stairs connecting heaven and earth. And on those stairs are angels ascending and descending up and down, up and down, almost like they're dancing. And Jacob awakens from the dream and names the place Bethel, which means house of God, because that's where heaven and earth meet. And Jesus looks at these new disciples from these different hometowns with all their hangups and all their stereotypes and says, I am the house of God. Heaven and earth meet in me. In other words, it doesn't matter what your hometown is when Jesus is your home. The other day I drove to Sweetwater to check on some things concerning the house we are selling there. I walked the floors of our old house, flooded with memories. It was anything but empty, and this unexpected sadness uh, brought me to tears. Not that I don't have much to be grateful for right now. I absolutely do. It's just that um, I think John O'Donohue said it best in his opening lines to Anamkara. It's strange to be here. The mystery never leaves you. Sometimes the mystery just takes the form of tears. But you know what, St. Andrew's family, it doesn't matter what your hometown is when Jesus is your home. Because a little later in the Gospel of John, Jesus will say, abide in me and I will abide in you as the Father has loved me, I love you. Abide in my love and these things I have spoken to you so that your joy may be full. 
And that's not easy, making a home in Jesus. I get that. I wrestle with it all the time, and there are plenty of other things I try to make my home in, hoping it'll take away some of the loneliness or the confusion or the pain. But I think abiding in him, making a home in his love, may be the only place where you and I can see through the ideologies and the screaming and the anger and the fear and the stereotypes and the defense mechanisms and the personas that we put on, where we can see through all that. We can see one another and we can see ourselves and we can see what Nathaniel and the other disciples saw. The possibility that not only can something good come out of Nazareth, but that something is what God looks like in flesh and blood where heaven and earth meet, the house of God, and following him and loving him and becoming like him, yes, is our greatest challenge, but it is also our greatest hope because he is our home. Amen. 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 Let us respond to gospel and sermon with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people are form two on page 385 in the Book of Common Prayer or on your online bulletin. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Scott, our bishop, Jared and Joe, our priests, Chris, Dee Dee, Dave, Mildred, Courtney, Miriam, and Tammy, our deacons for this gathering and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that we may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for the departed, especially Joyce Williams, Eddie Norfleet, Charles Upton, Don Frank Jr., 
and Elizabeth Navarro. Pray for those who have died. I ask your prayers for those in need of intercession. Bill and Deacon Roseanne Smith, small businesses, first responders, retail workers, and health care providers, the people of Amarillo, Canyon, and the Texas Panhandle, P.J. Pronger, John Mentler, Bill Nix, Gerald and Donna Burney, Hamilton Stansfield, Ann Scott, Pat Hagen, the Upton family, Carol McDonald, Tom Bivens, and Vance, Elsa, Elsa Pax, Lupi Akuna, Akuma, Laura, Ron, and Jan. Pray for those in need. I ask your prayers for those serving in the armed forces, especially Stephen, Garrett, Nelson, Casey, Brandon, Josh, Billy, Larry, Grayson, Aaron, Colby, Ransom, Beth, Arden, Stephen, Peyton, Blue, Dan, Laramie, Daniel, Kelly, Danny, Steve, Braxton, Sam, James, Robert, Levi, Micah, Trey, Joe, James, Chris, Gary, Luke, Mark, and Philip. Pray for those serving in the armed forces. I ask your prayers of thanksgiving for the community of St. Andrews, our family, friends, and staff, especially Annette, and all students in schools, especially St. Andrews School, Tascosa High School, Travis Middle School, and sixth grade campus, Bivens Elementary School, Midway Alternative High School, and Ascension Academy. Pray for the youth. I ask your prayers for the diet of the for our diocese for St. James and Dalhart and their clergy, Phil Ray. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. O oh Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace of the Lord. Peace, peace, peace. Well, the peace of the Lord be with y'all, and so glad we could be together this Sunday morning. We have a few announcements before uh, uh, Joe comes back up to uh, offer us the blessings. Uh, so uh, first, I just want to thank our stream team uh, and everybody who makes Sunday morning possible, and I want to thank our readers and our musicians, and I also want to thank um, Mark McKay, who every Sunday at 10 is on Zoom leading our children's chapel, and he's doing a great job. And Mark is a creative guy, and he loves children's ministry, and he's just so gifted in that way. So I want to offer him a big thanks this morning as well. So we have um, something coming up. We had a great response um, during Advent when we opened our nave on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and we had our musicians come and offer their musical gifts. 
offered y'all a time to pray or just to be still and quiet in that sacred space that so many of us love. So we're going to do that again through the remainder of Epiphany, uh, but we're just going to do it on Tuesday nights from five to seven. So no more Thursday afternoon. Tuesday nights seem to be um, the most populated one and the one that folks really responded to. So just want to put that on your calendar. The next five Tuesdays, I believe, is how many Tuesdays we have left in Epiphany. And so from five to seven, pop into the nave. Uh, and in a safe distance manner, you can enjoy that space and have a time of prayer, meditation, or just listen to the music. Um, small groups are up and running, and uh, most of them are going through the way of love uh, by presiding Bishop Michael Curry. Uh, if you're not plugged into a small group yet and um, you've been dragging your feet or have some questions uh, or just haven't gotten around to it, um, contact us. We'd love to plug you into a small group. We have several different options at several different times during the week. So uh, let us know how we can help you. And then last but not least, we have our annual meeting coming up. If you haven't registered online yet, I think we're going to be popping in a link during the comment section there. Uh, so you can uh, connect on that link and get registered to our annual meeting so you can vote for our upcoming vestry and, and convention delegates. So um, it's all going to be online. It's going to be a little bit uh, of an adventure, shall we say. That's what my grandma always said when we were in the car and she got lost. She'd say, we're on an adventure. Uh, so it's going to be a little bit of an adventure, but uh, it, it should be fun and, again, just a, a time for us to gather uh, as a community of faith and get excited about the year to come. Uh, speaking of annual meeting, I'm going to invite Deacon Courtney up to talk to you all about our practice uh, session. Hey, St. Andrews. We're going to be having a practice meeting next Sunday at 1230 just to make sure that people are able to access Zoom and are able to figure out how to use the ballots and other little troubleshooting things that we might need to do. So if you're not super confident with the technology, plan to come to that meeting. There will be a link to it uh, that will get sent out in your email this week if you've registered. If you have not registered yet, uh, now would be a great time to do that so that you'll get that link. And I think that should um, help us clear up any questions. We'll have our stream team here, most of them, to do some tech support and you can actually just call the church and they will route you to help. And I think that's all I need to say about that. Um, Great. Joe. I'm really loving the St. Andrews tag team. <laughs> it works beautifully. If you are celebrating an anniversary, uh, our anniversary prayer is next and ooh, Tiffany and John Lar, congratulations. And let's pray together. Tiffany and John, if you'll stand. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you. The Lord mercifully with his favor, wait, with his spirit, whoa, okay. I hope y'all are still standing, Tiffany and John. <laughs> this happens often. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, Bless, preserve, and keep you, the Lord, mercifully with his favor. Look upon you and fill you with all spiritual benediction and grace that you may faithfully live together in this life and in the age to come, have life everlasting. Amen. Amen. That's kind of a one and a half blessing. <laughs> there. And for birthdays, we have Norm Morrison. Happy birthday, Norm. And Amanda Morrison. Happy birthday, Amanda. And our birthday blessing is in your virtual program as well. Most of us know it by heart. Let us pray. Watch over thy children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts, may thy peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their lives through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now for our children's blessing. Let us pray. Father of generous fathers, we thank you for the gift of children. With each child, you refresh your covenant with our father Abraham. In each child, you confirm our call to be stewards of creation. We pray your blessing on each child here today. Teach them to love courage and to shun fear. Sharpen their eyes to see you at work in your world. 
loosen their tongues to speak words of love and reconciliation, turn their faces in charity toward their neighbors, and fill each one with confidence in your steadfast love. This we ask, blessed Father, in the name of your child, Jesus Christ, amen. Can hardly wait until we're back in the nave and Jared can have the privilege of being surrounded by those babies and blessing them. Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good your vows unto the Most High. She continues with the great Thanksgiving Eucharistic Prayer B, which begins on page 367. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, 
to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your son in his sacrifice that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with blessed Andrew, blessed Virgin Mary and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia! The gifts of God for the people of God. Let us pray. 
faithful God, in the wonder of your wisdom and love, you fed your people in the wilderness with the bread of angels, and you sent Jesus to be the bread of life. Though many of us have not consumed these gifts of bread and wine, we thank you that we all have received the sacrament of Christ's presence, the forgiveness of sins, and all other benefits of Christ's passion. Grant that we may continue forever in the risen life of our Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, now and forever. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you and those you pray for now and forever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us go forth to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.